Okay, so today's topic is uh, combinatorial. Um, how can I say combinatorial uh, interpretation of some kind of uh, determinant? This this is very important tool and very useful, and we will use this uh, many times. So it's a determinant. and non-intersecting uh, lattice path. Okay, so let me begin with the definition. We already defined this, but uh, a review. A lattice path from uh, one point, say u, a comma b, to v uh, w, c comma d, is a sequence mm, v zero, v one, dot dot dot, v n, such that uh, each v i is in z z times z, and the difference of the two uh, points is either 0, 0,1 or 1, 1,0. And the first point is u, and the last point is w. In this case, we say that it's a lattice path from this point to this point. So we go either uh, north or east. So, example. This is 0, 0,0, 4, 3. So this represents this sequence, 0, 0, and then here is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, and finally 4, 4. So this sequence, we as a diagram, you can draw a diagram like this. This kind of object is called a lattice path. <coughs> and on, we will be talking about uh, not just a single path, but a bunch of paths. So an n path is, is an n tuple. L1 dot 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 Ln of lattice path oh yeah just n, n path is nothing but a sequence of n lattice path uh, and we say that this n path is non-intersecting non-intersecting If yeah, if they are non intersecting. <laughs> so if L I intersect L J uh, empty for all I different from J. They don't have anything, any common vertex. They have to be completely disjoint. Otherwise, we say that if they otherwise, uh, it is called intersecting. Okay? <coughs> so non-intersecting means, for instance, we may have some path like this. So we have three, three things, three tuple. <coughs> this triple of uh, lattice path 
it is uh, not intersecting because we don't have anything in common. But on the other hand, if we have one more path, something like this, Uh, okay. So if we have uh, four tuples, like one, two, three, four, then the whole thing, uh, this four path is intersecting. It is not non-intersecting because two of them has a common vertex. So it's non-intersecting. It is not non-intersecting. <laughs> so intersecting or non-intersecting are defined like this. So our goal today is to compute the number of non-intersecting lattice path. Uh, compute, find the number of non-intersecting n, <coughs> n path, where we we fix the starting points and and the ending points. We want to compute the number of non-intersecting lattice path. Okay, let's see an example. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention this. So here, L of U, comma, W is the set of all uh, lattice path from U to V. Okay, this is our notation, L of U, comma, W. Oh, comma W. So our goal, find the no, number of non-intersecting lattice paths. For instance, we fix, okay, we, we want these four points to be the, the starting points. And we want these four points to be the ending points. We fix those only the f starting points and the ending points, and we want to compute the number of non-intersecting lattice paths. Okay? All right, so let's see an example, it's a simple uh, exam, uh, n equals 2 case. This can be uh, computed quite easily. Non-intersecting two-path. Uh, L1, comma L2, where L1 is in the set of lattice path from the origin to 4 comma 3, L2 is in uh, 1 comma minus 1, 4 comma 2. Let's just try to compute this. Uh, this can be done, I think um, this can be a good problem in high school math. Uh, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, one, two, three. So this is four comma three, one comma minus one, so it's zero comma zero, one comma minus one, four comma two. Okay. So basically, we want to compute something like this. We want to go from here to there, and like this. We want to compute number of two paths non-intersecting, something like this. By the way, what is the cardinality of L1s? What is the number of L1s? Path from here to here, without considering L2. If you consider all path, let us path from here to here. It is just 4 plus 3, choose 4, just binomial coefficient. And what about uh, L2, number of L2s? From here to there, we have one, two, three, four, five, six steps. And among them, we need to select three. Three plus three, choose three. Okay? These are easy. So just number of, without considering uh, non-intersecting business, number of just pairs, number of two paths from the given point, starting from given point to ending point, is just the product, 7.4, 6, uh, 6 choose 3. Very easy. But this is not what we want. We want to compute, not all of them, but uh, pairs of non, uh, paths which don't intersect. 
You can do this if you can know if you can compute the number of paths which are intersecting. Okay. Uh, so let's compute number of intersecting pairs L1 comma L2. This if you know this, the answer will be this minus this number. So suppose we have such a path. So let me draw such a path. Uh, maybe I can just this is one path. The other one is intersecting, so we have something in common. We may have many uh, intersection points, but yeah, at least one. So suppose we have things like this. So for L1, L2 intersecting, suppose that this uh, intersecting. Uh, th there are at least one intersection. Let's take the last intersection. So let's say P is the last intersection. What is uh, P here? This one. In this case, P is going to be this. 2 comma, 2 comma 1. So now what we are going to do is we are going to swap the tails. So, okay. So this is L1. And this is L2. We are going to define L, L prime and L L pr L1 prime and L2 prime this way. So L1 prime, it just goes, uh, it's the same as L1 until P, but then you will go the other, other way. You will use L2 for the after T, after P. So this is uh, L, L1 prime. L2 prime, similar. It is basically the same as L2 up until P, and then after that, it will follow L1, like this. Okay? So L1 prime is L1, okay, let's just simply say, because I already explained everything diagram, L1 prime, L2 prime, is obtained from the original path by uh, swapping the tails, say, after P, after the point P. Okay? Then what? Then what can you say about this? What is L1 prime? What is the starting point of L1? L1 prime. It is the same as L1, as the starting point of L1, so it's 0, 0. But the ending point will be now the, the other one, 4, 2. L2 prime. Starting point is the same as that of L2. And the ending point will be here. Uh, suppose now that you take one uh, path from here, another path from here, and you can see by the arrangement of these, no matter how you choose this, vert, uh, this point and this point, so l let me quickly draw this. So roughly it goes like this. So L, L1, pri L1 prime is always going to be like this, and L2 prime is always going to be like this. Because of the arrangement of the uh, starting points and ending points, they have to uh, intersect. You cannot have non-intersecting in this arrangement. You cannot go like this, and then you cannot go backward like this. Because we are not allowed to do this, this will always, L1 prime, L2 prime will always uh, intersect. If you select L1 prime from here, L2 prime from here. This is actually a very important fact. Without this, we cannot 
compute uh, this number easily. That means number of, and this gives a bijection between intersecting path from original starting and ending points and just any pairs of path from the modified and starting and ending points. That means, what is the number of L1 prime then? I mean, number of path from here, path in here. Just the binomial coefficient, 4 choose 2. Number of L2 prime, binomial coefficient, it is uh, 4 minus 1, 3 minus, minus 1. So it's 7, 7 choose 3, like that. Is that right? Mm. Oh yeah, very good. Thank you. Seven, six, choose two. Mm. Oh yeah, that's right. So, number of non uh, intersecting path to path equals just this. We just computed the number of intersecting paths. So the answer is what? This minus this. That's it. Mm, uh, I would like to have some more space. Okay, let me erase this diagram. We don't need any more. And from here, I'm going to summarize or I'm going to just write down the answer. So the answer, number of non-intersecting lattice path is 7 choose 4 times 6 choose 3 minus uh, 6 choose 2 7 choose 3. All right? I'm going to rewrite this as a determinant. This is equal to 7 choose 3. Mm. Okay, okay. I'm going to rewrite this and then tell you. This is equal. 7 choose 4 is equal to 7 choose 4, uh, 3. So. You know, if you compute this determinant, this times this minus this times this is equal to this. So we see in this a small example that number of non-intersecting lattice path is given by determinant like this. But what is this? 7 choose f uh, 3. 7 choose 3 is the number of path from here to here. Okay, L let me uh, call this let me say this is u1, u2, uh, v1, v2. All right. What is this then? Uh, okay. Let me uh, uh, re replace this number by this. I'm going to rewrite this just to give you the idea of our general theorem. Number of path from u1 to v1. Right. This one is that one. And this part is number of path from v u1 to v2. Number of path from u2 to v1. Number of path u2 to v2. So it looks very nice in this way. Number of path from ui to vj. That is the ij component of this matrix. Uh, very nice formula. And the thing is, this is true in general for any number of paths. Provided that we have this property. So this is the uh, motivating or yeah, motivating example. Any question about this example? Yes, so that is this one. This uh, condition is important. So we will uh, need this con condition. Without this condition, this is not true. 
So if you select a point just randomly, then you cannot have this, this kind of uh, determinantal formula. You may not have something like this. But as long as you have this condition, then this is true. Okay, so this is uh, uh, n equals 2 case, and now I'm going to uh, explain uh, state uh, the general theorem in the next slide. Any question before I proceed? Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, so the question is we exchange it, the tails after this last intersection. Can you do this using the first intersection? Yeah, that's true. You can do this. You, th there are different ways to do this. But you have to fix your uh, convention. But after that, you can just do this. Yeah. That's true. All right? Okay, now let me state the general theorem. Theorem. This is usually called uh, Gessel Vienna. Uh, Lindstrom lemma. This is a lemma. This is usually called lemma because it it is very useful to prove other things. But I think it is very interesting in its own in its own. <coughs> oh, by the way, uh, this is notation. So we have n points, u1 dot 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 u n, w1 dot 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 w n in this uh, lattice. And similarly to the previous notation, u1 dot 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 u n semicolon w1 dot 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 w n this is the set of all n paths L1 dot 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 Ln such that Li is a path from Ui to Wi. That means we have we have n path, we specify their starting points and ending points. So the first path goes from uh, u1 to w1. The second path should go from w2, uh, u2 to w2, etc. Okay, so now the statement uh, looks like this. All right, here is the important condition. For any permutation pi, Sn, Mm, L of u1 dot 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 un semicolon w pi of 1 dot 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 w pi of n. So th what, th what this means is that we switch the la uh, last ending points. So originally, uh, let me quickly draw this. So suppose we have u1, un, W1, Wn, like this. So originally, if you look at this, we have n uh, tuple of path, but this should go from here to here. They go something like this. This one goes to the But this, this means y you change uh, the ending point. So if permutation is like 1, 3, 2, 5, 4, then Instead of going from here to here, oh yeah, this still goes from here, but the second one goes from here to there, third one, fourth one, like this. We just change the, uh, the ending point, the order of the ending points more, more precisely. So if you look at that, if you consider this, this uh, has 
or non-intersecting uh, end path. If and only if pi is the identity permutation. We have this condition. So we assume this. This is assumption. Um, so assu assume that, let's say assume that we have this situation. So the points are somehow well, well uh, distributed. They are not just random, they satisfy this condition. Okay? So, if you look at this previous one, you can, you can go from here to here, here to there. We, may, we can only have non-intersecting if, if U1 goes, uh, U, uh, we have a path from U1 to V1, U2 to V2. If you switch the, uh, the ending points, then we always have intersecting. We don't have any non-intersecting path, right? So we have this kind of situation. That's the, con uh, our, that is our assumption. Is this assumption clear? So if you want to find a non-intersecting path, you have to go from the first point to the first, second to the second, etc. Otherwise, if you change at least one thing, one pair, then you will never get a non-intersecting path. This is our assumption. Without this assumption, this one, this theorem cannot say anything. This, this condition must be uh, satisfied. Okay, now we have this condition, then, then number of non-intersecting end path equals, of course, this must be, yeah, this condition is actually uh, redundant because non-intersecting path is always here, but just to make it even more clear, if there is any non-intersecting lattice path that must be here, right? But this condition, this is not quite uh, necessary because it is already implied. This is equal to determinant of this matrix, number of lattice path from ui, wj i, j from 1 to n. So this is the statement of the theorem. It's a very useful theorem and yeah, we will, many of the classes of uh, permutation, uh, plane partitions can be uh, evaluated, can be uh, counted using this method. Okay, uh, so let's prove this. Proof is not that difficult. The statement is very important, but proof is also very, very important because, uh, you know, many situations you need to really see if this uh, theorem can be applied. We will later on, we will not just count the number of lattice paths, but we will also uh, compute generating function for the non-intersecting lattice path. So this proof is also very important. You really need to understand this proof very well because otherwise you don't really, you can, it is difficult to apply this theorem without knowing the proof. So let's begin from this uh, determinant. So the determinant here, uh, by definition of a determinant, uh, it is given like this, Sn. The proof is quite similar to the, the previous example. The idea is you, you, we do cancellation, and then after all this cancellation, we will end up getting just non-intersecting this path. So this is uh, the definition of lattice path. Uh, the determinant L1, Ln, L pi of, oh no, 
mm, you not L. You want U N V uh, W pi one W pi N. This is just the definition. Because the product of this is just the number of n path here. Because this is just a basically Cartesian product of Hadis. Okay? If you want, you can you can write this way. This is just you know the product of this is equal to this. All right. So our we, in order to prove this, we have we have to do some cancellation here. Uh, we will construct a sign reversing involution sign involution say a uh, phi on this set x which is the set of all of this So pi for all pi. So what is this x? This is a set of n path where the starting points are given and the ending points are given, but we don't know how they match it together. They are free. They can go from anywhere to anywhere. Only the n starting points and the n ending points are fixed. You can, have, you can go from one point to any ending point. Doesn't matter, as long as n point go to endpoints. We're going to make some cancellation. Sign reversing. All right. Uh, I think I need to go to the next page. So let's take one uh, path L. L1 dot 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 LN is in X in our path. N path N. It may or may not be uh, intersecting, non-intersecting. So if non-intersecting, if L is non-intersecting, then this is uh, what we want. What do you want to count? Intersecting. Define uh, this to be a fixed point. Okay, we are not going to do this. Just leave it as it is. If it is intersecting, we will do something. Uh, we will change this path, like we did for the two-path case. So if now, uh, so if L is intersecting, otherwise, otherwise it must be intersecting. We will do the following. Uh, okay, what does this mean? We have n path, and they are intersecting. What does that mean? There is at least one pair of path, one pair of two path, L1, Li, Lj, which are intersecting. We may have m many pairs, but select just one, one pair. Uh, okay. Find the maximal, so be because we can have many uh, intersecting uh, pairs, Max, we need to uh, determine which will, will be ch chosen. Maximal uh, pair ij in lexicographic order, in lex order, for which li, lj intersect. Just select this. And now we have just the two paths which are intersect, which are intersecting. Again, there can be many, many intersections. So as before, we are going to take the last intersection. Take, uh, find the, okay, let's say just P is the, let P 
be the last intersection of L I and L J. Okay. The situation is pretty much the same as before. We have two paths, like maybe some uh, U I. U J uh, W how can I say we don't know how they uh, are arrange it but let's suppose we have such situation like this mm, uh, okay I'm gonna change a little bit doesn't really matter but just to make it easier similar to before like this there can be many, but yeah. So this is L1, uh, L1, L2. This is P. In this example, just one intersection. But there can be many. We will just select the last one. And we define, oh, no, it is, should be Li and Lj, right? Lj. L i, we define uh, L i prime to. Uh, okay, let's write exactly the same way as before. L i prime, L j prime, is obtained from L i L j by exchanging the tails after p. So again, L, L I prime will be this. L J prime will be this. L J prime. L I prime. Okay. So in this case, we we leave the other uh, n minus two path just unchanging. So phi of L equals L1, they are all the same except Li, Li prime, let's say Lj prime. We just leave the n minus 2 path uh, uh, unchanged, and Li, we replace Li by Li prime, Lj by Lj prime. All right. So what is this in uh, then it is uh, lattice path from it must be somewhere here uh, say pi prime because we change it some ending point the permutation will be changed too what is pi what is the relation between pi and pi prime what is pi prime If pi is pi 1, pi 2, pi n, uh, what is pi prime? Mm. It is almost the same as pi except the ith position and uh, jth position. Oh no, we don't need that one. Okay, let's, let's write this way. So pi, we have pi pi 1 dot 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 pi i dot 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 pi j this is original pi and pi prime <coughs> is the same except we just switch these two we just switch these two numbers but the other things are the same okay now what what is uh What is the relation between sine pi and sine pi prime? We just switch these two so they have to have different signs. That means uh, in our sum, here we consider all lattice path 
from end point, starting point to end ending point. And if there is some intersection, we do some change. We get another intersection, uh, intersecting point, intersecting lattice path. Clearly, uh, clearly, phi of L also intersect, right? Because you know, P is still an inter intersection point there. So these two can be paired. They have different signs, so they will cancel out. Like we did for the, exam uh, the example when we have just two paths. So this is a sign reversing involution. So phi is a sign reversing involution. That means uh, the determinant is equal to number of fixed points. of this uh, involution. And what are the fixed points? What are the fixed points of this uh, involution phi? Yes. A path is fixed if and only if it is non-intersecting. Okay. Then this is equal to number of non-intersecting, non-intersecting lattice path. That's the proof. Okay, where did we use the condition that non-intersecting path must be from um, the pi must be identity? Did we use that? Um, I don't remember I used that. Okay, um, yeah, 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 right, right, right. Yeah. This is not true yet. Uh, actually, it's true eventually, but here uh, I think I need one more argument. Sign reversing involution. Mm. Phi is a sign reversing involution, sign reversing involution on this set X, right? But the determinant, if you look at this, what is this? This is a signed sum. For all lattice path, for all end path, you either add 1 or minus 1, depending upon this sign. Right? So we may have some other, if you don't have this condition, this important condition, we may have some um, other intersect, non-intersecting lattice path, they may have sign, not just plus, minus. They can be, they may have minus sign there. So without this, we cannot say that this is number of non-intersecting lattice path. So actually, if you remove this condition, then the theorem should be stated like this. This is going to be the signed sum of non-intersecting lattice path. Does this make sense to you? Mm, okay, maybe I uh, explain. So here, let me explain. Uh, determinant equals uh, summation uh, L x this this, right? And here, this is the summation of L in the set of fixed points of phi. 
meaning uh, phi of L equals L, sine of L. You cannot say anything uh, more than this if you don't have that condition. But because uh, L is non-intersecting, if and only if uh, pi equals identity, 1, 2, 3, 4, sine of L is always 1. That's why we that's why we can conclude that determinant equals number of non-intersecting and this is the finally the end of the proof. question? Okay, if you, uh, if you, I think um, most of you are kind of confused about this. Let me give you an example. It will be helpful if you see this example where we don't have this condition. Actually, this is very important condition. But if we don't have this, then this is not working. So let's find a, some small example. Okay. Very sim small example. We need to have two points, starting point, ending point, uh, like We want to go uh, non-intersecting both ways, like, not like this. I want to uh, kind of arrange the points that way. This. Okay. Let me think about it. Mm, yeah, because I don't have that in my lecture notes yet. Let me think about it. There is a simple example. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think this is this is this this would work. So this is U one, U two, uh, V one, V two. In this case, we can go like this, okay, and also uh, we can also go like this. If, so, this arrangement, this arrangement is bad. We cannot apply the theorem because we don't have that condition. Even though we change it, the order, this goes not to this, to the, but to V2, this goes to V1, but we still have non-intersecting race path. So in this case, if you try to compute the determinant, you will get a wrong number. But that wrong number is equal to number of, so what I'm saying is that in this case, um, determinant of that thing is going to be number of non-intersecting non -intersecting path from uh, in, let's say, L, U, U, U1, U2, to V1, V2 minus number of non-intersecting path in U1, U2, 
u v2 v1 because this permutation 2 1 has sine minus but we don't want to have this maybe sometimes we want to consider this as well but usually we don't want this that's why we have that condition okay simply let's just ignore this situation let's if you consider if the arrangements are nice then we don't have this we'll just get the number of non intersecting lattice pairs but without that condition determinant is not always equal to this but we have some extra minus or plus if we have additional non intersecting path from different arrangement that's the uh, idea that's the reason why we need to have that condition so whenever you uh, want to use a uh, Gessel-Vienno lemma you have to check this con whether this condition is true or not So, any question about this? Mm. Oh, yeah, good question. I didn't define that. Where is it? Sign, so if, because L is in X, L must be somewhere. W pi 1 for some permutation pi. Unique permutation pi, right? L will determine this permutation. And what I mean by the sine L is the sign of this permutation. So for all lattice path, you compute non-intersecting lattice path, you compute the sign. But because of this assumption that non-intersecting lattice path, we must have pi always identity. The sign is always one. And that's that's the that's it. And what is nice about this theorem is that this can be applied to a weighted version. Meaning so here we add just sign or plus or minus one. But for each lattice path we may attach some weight like q to the 10, q to the second, something like that. But even with this complicated weight, uh, this uh, can still work. And that's why I want you to remember or completely understand this proof. Because whenever you use a uh, weighted version or more complicated situation, you have to check whether this proof works for your situation. If you only consider number of non-intersecting non lattice path, then th you don't have to re uh, understand or remember this proof, but we want to do something more general, like weighted version. So we will always keep this proof in mind and then try to uh, see whether this proof works in that situation. In our example, we will use a weighted version, not just number. Okay. Now, this is the important dilemma. And now, let's, uh, we will go back to our favorite object, mm, plane partition. So what is a plane partition? We already know that. Mm. Let me re recall you this uh, theorem. So P of n, number of partitions of n. And P, P of n is the number of plane partition of n. And they have nice theorem, nice generating function like this. P of n, Q to the n equals this. Summation, generating function for the number of plane partitions 
is just this raised out to uh, i power. And there is even more uh, happening. So let's say p of a comma b is the set of partitions inside or okay let's say inside this box a times b and b a comma b comma c is the set of plain partitions inside this box this rectangular box a b c okay if you draw plain partition in the, as a stack of boxes we want to compute the number of plain partitions inside this uh, big box then uh, we have this proposition which is a uh, kind of generalization or refinement of this number of partitions lambda uh, for all the sum over all partitions lambda q to the the size of lambda. So this is a generating function for partitions inside this rectangular rectangle. And we know well, last time we learned that this is equal to this q uh, q binomial coefficient. Okay, do you remember? And actually, we can rewrite this. Uh, This can be rewritten in this way. Okay. If you write this using Parkhammer symbols and and let me rewrite this a little more. A to B, uh, J from one to B. This looks like this. All right. They are all the same, just uh, different. Uh, different uh, expression. They look different, but they are they are equal. Because I want I wrote this because it is kind of similar to uh, plane partition case. So this is theorem for all plane partitions inside this rectangular box, q to the size of p uh, pi. This is equal to i from one. to a, j from 1 to b, 1 minus q to c plus i plus j minus 1, i plus j minus 1. Or if you want, you can write this as a triple product, which looks uh, symmetric in a, i, j, k, a, a, b, c. Minus I think one minus two. So in this sense, they look kind of kind of similar. And if you remember, uh, we proved that this, when A B C approaches infinity, we get this back. Right? So it, it is, uh, in that sense, more general than this. So, what we want to do is prove this theorem. We can now prove this theorem using Gessel Vienna lemma. So, but before proving this, let's first compute the number of path and the number of partitions inside this box, because that is finite. We we don't have infinitely many plain partitions inside this box. A, B, C are finite, so there should be a finite number of boxes there. Mm. So the idea is that this 
a permit a partition a plane partition inside this box can be identified as a non-intersecting lattice path. Intersecting lattice path. How? Let me draw this. Oh. So plane partition. Um, let's say A equals 3, B equals 5, C equals 3. And if you draw a partition like this, but I'm not going to draw a 3D diagram, but it's 2D diagram. Oh, too many. So 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Let, let, let's write 0, 0 if there's nothing there. So that means that we have three boxes stacked on this uh, spot, and two boxes boxes stacked vertically on this uh, spot, etc. There's nothing there. So you can imagine this 3D box. So because that uh, C uh, less than C is three means everything should be less than or equal to three. All right. Now uh, I'm gonna re re rewrite this uh, as a non-intersecting lattice path. So. Let's consider this, this part, where we have things that are at least one. Okay? The upper part of this uh, path, everything is at least one. Right? And now, we're going to find a path such that the upper part, part uh, the part uh, which is above this path is consists of uh, pa uh, numbers, uh, integers, at least two, okay? Finally, uh, this part, integers, great, great, uh, at least three. So we divide this into three uh, lattice paths like this. But they are intersecting this way. They have common vertices and com even common edges. So here, I'm going to uh, shift this thing, so we have uh, the red path, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, one. Instead of going from uh, zero comma zero, I'm gonna shift this to this, this uh, by one in this diagonal way. So one up, north, uh, east, east, north, east, north. East and east. Okay. And finally, this one uh, again shift this by two unit diagonally. Then maybe like this. So here it's going to be zero comma zero to. What is the ending point here? This is A. This is B. Then it's. Um, B comma A. And this one, uh, minus 1 comma 1, minus 2 comma 2. This is B, B minus 1 comma A plus 1. B minus 2 comma A plus 2, like that. Now they are non-intersecting. These are fixed. These are fixed. Then we just count number of non, we just count non-intersecting non lattice path. For every non-intersecting lattice path here, we will get permutation. This is one-to-one -one, uh, a plane partition. This is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So this corresponds to so that means B A comma B comma C corresponds to. Okay, N L means non-intersecting n path, okay? U1, dot, dot, dot. So how many paths do we have if we have A, B, C? C is the number of paths. C is three, we have one, two, three things. So U, C, W1, W, C, where U, I equals, uh, yeah, I think it's better to begin with Minus one comma i, minus i one comma one. So, yeah. 
So I, I changed this a little bit, but they are basically the same. J minus J, A plus J. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to shift this by one again just to say that this is the first path is like minus one comma one, minus two comma two, minus three comma three. Okay? Minus one, plus one, two, two, three, three. So this is a bijection. So the, so the number of, of course, plane partitions inside uh, a, a, B, C, number of non-intersecting path. That is path. U, U, C. Now, can you apply gessel vienna lemma here? Think about their arrangement of, arrangement of the st starting and ending points. Suppose you uh, exchange you switch the order of the last ending point. Then you will always get inter non intersection You will always have intersection. If you go from here to here and here to here, you cannot have non-intersecting. Always intersecting. So the condition for the kessel vienna lemma is satisfied. So this is equal to the determinant number of lattice path from ui to vwj, which is quite easy to compute because just the uh, lattice path from one point to other. So determinant A plus B, B plus I minus J, where I, J from 1 to C. Okay, evaluating this determinant is another business. That's actually m more difficult. But now we expressed a number of plane partitions as the number of non-intersecting lattice path and as, as a determinant. This is where a determinant uh, comes into play. Okay, uh, any question? Then we will take a 10-minute break. <laughs>